This is the beach at Peniche. Behind me is the Atlantic Ocean. To put it into context geographically where we are, we are north of Lisbon, but we're south of Porto. The waves are crashing in. You can actually feel the spray hitting your face. On the cliffs just up there, you probably can't see them properly, but we've got fishermen fishing off the top of the cliff to try and get the daily catch. And as I come round, we've got three surfers out. And this is obviously quite a spectator sport because we've got quite a crowd now watching them all out at sea. Before we show you around Peniche, on our way to get here, we had to travel over the massive Vasco da Gama bridge. And this is the largest bridge in the European Union and the second largest bridge in Europe after the Crimean bridge. It was built to alleviate congestion uh, into Lisbon and to eliminate the need for traffic between the country's north and southern regions to pass through the capital city itself. Construction began in 1995 and the bridge was opened to traffic in the 20th of March 1998. It was named after Vasco da Gama, who is Portugal's most famous seafaring explorer and was the first European to reach India by sea. It's quite an experience driving over this bridge and thankfully the weather was good on the day we travelled over it. But I can imagine if the wind's blowing and the weather's not so good, then it might well be quite an interesting time in a high-sided vehicle. But for us on this day, we could sit back and enjoy the view and enjoy the experience as we made our way to Peniche. We found this really great air, um, which used to be, I think, an old bus depot, but it's perfectly served now as a motorhome air. Hard standing, electric, everything all in, uh, and even an area to wash your van if you wanted to. So all in all, it looked like it was going to be a good few days at Peniche. And we were very much looking forward to seeing the fantastic waves that we'd heard about. So we unpacked and we set off to explore. Our first stop was the North Beach, which isn't about 10, 15 minute walk from the site. We were very privileged to meet four sisters from the Catholic Church who had told us about um, a surfer angel, a 34 year old doctor and priest but also who was a world championship surfer. Now this man died on the waves age 34. As you can imagine, top end surfing is quite a dangerous thing. But he used to donate his time and his medical services to the poor in the streets. And for that, he's going through the beautification process, which is on the road to being a saint. It wasn't long before the living surfers came out on the beach and what a show they put on. Skilled, dedicated, demonstrating flexibility, strength, you name it. It was quite an incredible sight. We headed up then onto the headland. are 182 million years old. Wow. <laughs> I can't believe it, can you? And it's um, volcanic. Yeah. Incidentally, this is the fourth best surfing place in Europe and an amazing place to bring your camera if you're into photography. So as the sunset approached us, it gave us the best light of the day. So I put the camera on the tripod and did what I enjoy doing most. I took some pictures and some video 
which reflect not just the natural beauty of the area, the swell of the sea, and the rugged and dynamic nature of this headland. As we walked over the bridges and down the pathways, there was quite some drops either side, but when we got to the end, we found more fishermen. It's a very popular place for fishermen, for sea fishermen in particular. Fishing off the rocks some considerable distance down to the sea itself. I had quite a good time here. Taking seascapes uh, pictures is something I particularly enjoy. I do it a lot back home, but it's always nice to do it in the context of the west coast of Europe, where the surroundings and scenery are so dynamic. The clouds are big, and the sky is often nicely tinted with colour. This is the Fort de Luz. It was built by King Manuel I in the 16th century. The idea was to keep away the pesky British and French Corsairs who were raiding the west coast. This next beach is quite interesting because it was used by surfers and paddle boarders. It seemed to be a little bit more sheltered and therefore not quite as, as uh, difficult. So you would say that this would be a, um, a good place to start surfing in a place that's designed for you to learn to surf. Yeah. There's one thing you always get in water supermarket trolley when the, right, when the rain's gone out yeah. when the rain's gone out there's always a supermarket trolley yeah. <laughs> whatever you are in the world, in the world. that tradition <laughs> has been followed <laughs> yeah this is famous for lace making here the factory for it is over there Well, walking through the old town of Peniche and it really is quite attractive and this church was built at the beginning of the 17th century there are 15 paintings inside representing the parts of the New and Old Testament its walls are tiled it says and it has the paintings as well and this is Peniche or Peniche as we think it's called harbour. This side's where all the marine pleasure boats, for want of a better word, there's some big expensive vessels here. There's a pan around to the other side, it's quite a lot of industrial vessels. Some big hangars where quite big vessels are out of the water being repaired. This is quite an important area. In fact fishing and uh, maritime is trade, tourism and agriculture are the big three um, issues or big three things here that keep the economy stable. And on both sides there are small lighthouses, a red lighthouse and a green lighthouse for the in and out lanes. Just around the corner from the harbour is a fortress and a castle that was built in the 16th century. It's quite an impressive building and overlooks the harbour in a defensive way. But more recently, it's remembered for a more sinister reason. Is that in Portugal's recent past, there was a civil war after a period of authoritarian rule. And this was used as a prison for some of the uh, political prisoners that were captured during that battle that ended in 1974. The new government decided it would keep this place as a, as a museum and a memorandum to the suffering that the prisoners undertook on behalf of the state. To its right are a number of coloured cottages, which I hope you'll agree are always a pleasure to see. Reminds me a little bit of a Portuguese Tobamori or a Spanish Villa Hayosa. But either way, colours bring joy to me. I love it. And I'll sit and take pictures of it all day long, given the chance. But given that I'm normally under instruction on these visits not to spend too much time taking pictures, we set off back down the walkway to get a really good view of the fortress from the other side.
You can walk a complete loop around the peninsula that is Peniche. And right on the tip of it is the lighthouse. Now, it's not a very old lighthouse. It was uh, automated in 1988, uh, but obviously it's been around a bit longer than that. But it's a very effective place locationally, and it's here to obviously protect shipping. The rocks behind are limestone, and they've been here 175 million years. And yet they're all different shapes because they've been shaped by the weather and the rain. As a result, a chapel was built here in the 16th century, which became a, a local religious centre. We then made our way back to the van and headed off towards Nazare. Helen out. Martin out. <laughs>